Hey y'all. Uh, today's lesson is lesson 10 for surface area of prisms and I've given you a note outline. Let me first go over some vocabulary. A solid is a three-dimensional figure and we're going to be talking about different solids but a solid is a three-dimensional figure. Okay, that's better. Uh, and so we break up solids into polyhedrons and non-polyhedrons. A polyhedron is a solid with flat surfaces, flat faces, uh, no curves and no round faces. And the two, not the only, but the two primary polyhedrons we will talk about this year are prisms. And prisms have two congruent parallel bases. If you're not going to remember these symbols and write the words, two congruent parallel bases. And the other... Um, and the other sides are rectangle faces. For a prism, it has two congruent parallel braces with rectangular bases with rectangular faces. A pyramid has one base and triangle faces. So those are going to be the two polyhedrons that we talk about the most. Now, non-polyhedrons are still three-dimensional fig three-dimensional figures, but they have round or curved surfaces. And here are three types, cylinders, cones, and spheres. A cylinder has two congruent parallel bases, but they're circles. A cone has one base, that's a circle. And a sphere is like a ball. I'm just going to put a ball. And all the points are equal distance from the center. So in a sphere, uh, you have the center of a circle, and all the points around the center are the same, and so that's where you get the sphere from that makes the ball. Let's get into some examples. Example one, let me move my paper up. Example one, classify the solid and count the faces, edges, and vertices. Now, your paper might have three, so you can X out the number three because I just changed it to two. Uh, the first one, I couldn't figure out how to use my computer to uh, create these shapes, so we're going to have to draw them. The first one, you are going to draw a rectangle. And then at the top up here, you put a point. And you are going to connect all of the corners of your rectangle to make a pyramid. So we have a pyramid. Now this is a rectangular pyramid because the base is a rectangle and then all the sides are triangles. To count faces, edges, and vertices, see my faces, edges, and vertices. First you need to make sure you know what faces, edges, and vertices are. Faces are the flat planes, the flat um, sides of a three-dimensional shape. So this triangle right here, that would be a face. And on a pyramid, we have one right here in the front, one in the back, and then two on the side. So there's four triangles and the base. So we have five faces. Edges are where two faces meet together. So this right here would be an edge and here's another edge. And so there's four edges on the bottom on the base and then we have this right here would be an edge because it's where two faces meet. And we have one, two, three, four edges um, around the side. So this has eight edges. And vertices are where two or more edges come together like the points. So you can see I'm just going to color in all of our vertices. Those are the points and this shape has five vertices. Now the faces and edges are not always going to be this. I mean the faces and vertices are not always going to be the same. Example two is a triangular prism. So let's draw a right triangle. I'm going to show you how to draw a right triangle. From the top corner you're going to kind of go diagonal and then from the bottom corner you're going to go diagonal just a little bit further and then you're going to connect. So there is a triangular prism. If you want to see the three-dimensional, then you can use dashed lines to kind of see your three-dimensional shape. And we need faces, edge, and vertice. 
Now remember faces are the flat, so like I'm going to shade this flat face in. That would be one face. And then there's one on the back, so it's two. And then on the tri on those sides we have three, we have one on the back, and one on the bottom. So we have five faces. In this shape, I, here are my edges. So I have where two faces come together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges. And then vertices are my points, and those I can just color in and show you that we have six vertices. Okay, Ex here are some key concepts. Before we get into our examples, key concepts. Finding the surface area of a solid, and again, we're just going to focus on prisms today. There are two methods. The first one is by using the net. Um, a net is when you take a shape and you fold it out flat and you see all the faces. We'll talk about nets in class. We're going to focus right here on the formula. The formula for finding surface area is 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height of the prism. And I'm going to write that out. 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter times the height of the prism. And it's important that you understand each part. So I'm going to go through this very slowly and explain each part. Uh, well, first, you're going to multiply it by 2 because there are two bases. For example, in this triangle, here is a base, and then on the back there's a base. There's always two congruent bases in a prism, two congruent bases, and they're always the ones parallel. In this shape, this is a triangular prism because the bases are triangle. In this shape, it's a rectangular prism because the bases are rectangles. Now, you could say... This front is a base and the back, you could say the sides are bases. It's up to you. I'm just going to say that this is the base, and so then the back would be the base. So it's 2 times the area of the base. And in a triangle, the area of the base is 1 half base times height. Now, don't get confused. This is a capital B for the base area. This is a lowercase b for the base of the triangle. So you notice I have a lowercase b for the base of the triangle. One half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. In a triangle, the height always has to be a right angle. And that's why this is a lowercase h, and this one up here is a capital H, because this is the height of the prism. So two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base. Now, in this example, if I said this was the base, then I would need this perimeter. Um, in this one, you would need the triangular perimeter. Whatever the base is, it's the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. Oh, and this would be length times width for the area of the base. The height of the prism is how tall the prism is if you were to stand it up on its base. So for this triangular prism, you have to kind of visualize. If we took this triangular prism and we stood it up on the triangle, then the height would be right here the height of the prism. So that would be like the capital H right here. In this example, if this were the base, this rectangle, and we turned it on its base, it would be this tall, this, this tall right here, um, even though it doesn't look like it. If you turned it on the base, it would go up that high. Now, if you used this end as the base, and you turned it on its base, then it would be this tall. Rectangular prisms are a little different just because any of the rectangles could be the base. But triangular prisms, you know the triangle is the base, so that is always the height of the prism. Okay, so let's do some examples on the back. No, no, no. Please close the door. Here we go. Go. Okay, please close the door. I'm sorry. All right, in the surface area, um, in this triangle, we need to label it, and we have 10 and 13 and 13, and that's 12, and this is 15 centimeters. All right, to find the surface area, we're going to start with the um, formula, and we are going to plug in what we know. The base is a triangle, so the area of a triangle is one half 
times the base times the height. And then the perimeter of the base. So the perimeter of the base is right here, this triangle right here. And that would be 26, no, 36. And then the height of the prism is how tall it is, and there's 15. We're going to use our calculators, and we are going to type this in, 120 plus 540. So you notice I've typed this in to get 120, and I typed this in to get 540. And my surface area is 660 centimeters squared. Because it's area, then I always want to square it. All right, number two, or the second example. <clears throat> Find the surface area. Here are my measurements. This is eight. Oh, there's my right ankle. A six and then a 10. And this is 14 millimeters. Surface area equals 2B plus PH. And my base is a triangle. So again, I'm going to use that one half times the base of the triangle, which is eight times the height of the triangle, which is six. Now remember, the height and base always have to make a right angle. That's why in this example, I didn't use 13 for the height of the triangle. I used 12 and 10. In this example, the base and the height make the right angle, plus the perimeter of the base. So I need to add together 6, 8, and 10. That's 24. And the height of the prism is 14. I type all of this in, and I'm going to get 48. Type this in, plus 336, and my surface area is equal to 384 meters squared. All right, I'm checking the time. Now, in this example, we have a rectangular prism, and it's kind of up to you how you want to approach it. I'm just going to show you, I'm going to shade this in. Let's just pretend that this is our base. So shade that in, and this is our base. Uh, we have 12 feet. 3 feet and 5 feet. We start with our formula. Always start with your formula. Now the base is this shaded here and to find the area we need to do length times width. So 3 times 5. And I'm just going to make an arrow. This is our base. Um, the perimeter of the base. So you have to find the perimeter 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3, which would be 16, times the height of the prism, 12. Uh, we've got right here, this is 30 plus 16 times 12. I didn't write that down. 192. And my surface area is 222 feet squared. Now you might be asking, why do I want you to write them both down? And that's because I want to show you, in this last part, it says find the lateral area. Now the lateral area are the sides of the solid, not the bases. We do not want to include the bases. So the lateral area is just the second half of our formula just the second half of our surface area formula. For example, in this, uh, this is a cube, so they're all nine meters. We wanna find just the lateral area, so we're gonna say the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. The perimeter in this one, we'll say this is our base right here. The perimeter of this would be nine times four, which is 36, and the height of the prism is here, so 36 times nine, and that is 324 meters squared. The lateral area, it doesn't include the bases, so I'm going to shade in. The lateral area is just the area around the side, so you can't see I would shade in that side, and then the bottom. It does not include the two bases. I'm trying to check my time. In this triangle, we have 5, 12, and 13, and 22. Lateral area would be the perimeter times the height. The perimeter of this triangle is 5 plus 12 plus 13 times the height of the prism. Now notice I just wrote these out. 5 plus 12 plus 13. And when you type all that in, you get 660 
meters squared. That is just the lateral area, so it's just the rectangular sides. It does not include the bases. All right, we are going to practice more with um, um, surface area of prisms soon.